Hey guys, welcome to the behind the scenes of the 3D animator versus animation video. This was a very exciting and different video for us to make. We learned a bunch of new things about making realistic animations inside of Unreal Engine and integrating live action elements into it. If you haven't seen the short film, make sure to check it out first. It's a lot of fun. Alright, now let's jump into the movie magic behind it. The first step was to come up with the story for the short film. I wanted to have two main scenes, one where a CG character comes into the real world and another where I somehow get into the 3D world. One of the inspirations for this concept was Alan Becker's Animator vs Animation series. Another was an old video that I did a long time ago where cartoon drawings from my drawing book escaped from it and caused havoc in the house. The thing that made this project unique for us was that we were doing full CG environments that we were going to cut alongside real footage and they had to blend in and look seamless and that's where Unreal Engine came in. UE5 has this new technology called Nanite which lets us build huge environments with tens of millions or even billions of triangles. It also has a new lighting system called Lumen which lets you render out animations with very realistic lighting in real time. This isn't possible with a traditional 3D program like Blender or Cinema 4D. It would just take way too long to render even just one frame whereas in Unreal I can render out a whole shot in lesser time. The cool thing about Unreal is that you can import models and characters that were made in a 3D program like Blender, Cinema 4D, 3ds Max or Maya. You can either bring in your animations or you could also animate them inside of Unreal Engine. One of the things I enjoyed the most was building the scene using 3D models from Quixel Megascans. I picked up all the assets I liked and brought them over into Unreal and placed them around my scene. I was always looking for reference images from a real location near where I live and I thought it would be a nice touch to have 3D models of some of the rocks from the real place. So I decided to photo scan them myself using Reality Capture. This is a program that you can feed a bunch of images of an object into and it'll generate a really high quality 3D model from it. So we scanned a few rocks, ground and even an entire mountain that I could drop into the background of my scene. This really helped make the scene look more like the real location. Now let's talk about the characters. The 3D rig character was modeled in Blender. I wanted it to be the equivalent of a 2D stick figure, so it had to be very simple in design. But since it was going to enter the real world, I added some surface imperfections and damage while texturing it to make it look realistic. As for the raptor, I sculpted it in Blender. I made a base mesh by deforming a sphere. Then I sculpted in the larger details and converted it to a mesh with clean topology. Next, I unwrapped the model and started sculpting in all the tiny details with alpha brushes. Then I baked in all that detail onto normal and cavity maps and texture painted the mesh. Once it was rigged and ready, I exported it out as an FBX model and brought it into Unreal. For the animation of the mannequin character, we used the motion capture suit by Rococo. They even have a plugin for Unreal that makes it very easy to bring in animations for our characters. As for the raptor, it was a combination of motion capture and manual hand animation with keyframes. Unreal Engine also has this new system called MetaHumans, which lets you create hyper-realistic human characters. You can also use Control Rig to animate them all inside of UE5, so you don't have to keep switching between different programs anymore. We didn't use it on this video, but we'll definitely be using it in the future. Now let's look at how I brought myself into this 3D Unreal world. We filmed all of that in front of a green screen. Then I keyed the footage in After Effects, masked around just the stuff I needed and exported it as an image sequence with transparency. I could then use it as a texture on my plane and make my shots. You could also do the keying inside Unreal Engine but our shots were a bit tricky and there was stuff that had to be removed. So After Effects just seemed a little bit easier. Here's an example of a more straightforward shot that can be easily keyed in Unreal Engine. Here, I used the chroma keyer function to get rid of all the green in the shot. One of the things that Unreal Engine is known for is virtual production. You can set up a virtual camera and render your Unreal scene on a huge LED screen and film your actors in front of it as if you were really there. So the camera can even move around and change angles and the background will shift precisely the same way to get all the parallax right. You also get all the bounce lighting reflections and it'll look super realistic. And most importantly, there's no post-production involved. This is truly groundbreaking for filmmaking. Now back to our video. Once I had all the animation and footage placed in my scene, it was time to animate the camera. I used the camera shake based blueprint class to generate camera shake, which works procedurally and it really helps make things feel more consistent with the live action shots. Like in this example where I run out of the cave, I rendered out my scene from a static camera and used that as footage to extend my live action plates. For this shot, I used a plugin by Red Giant called Chromatic Displacement for doing this cool looking screen impact effect. Once all the VFX was done, the final step was to edit it together all the shots in DaVinci Resolve. 
I also added in some live action close-up shots from a real location where I was interacting with the environment just to make the scene more grounded to reality. Next, I color graded the shots and added in all the layers of sound effects and music. If all the shots in the film were made inside of Unreal Engine, we could have actually combined them to form a scene in Unreal Sequencer. This would make it a lot easier if we wanted to go back and make any changes. Unreal Engine has really opened up so many possibilities for me as a filmmaker. Huge thanks to Unreal Engine for making this video possible. I could basically set my movie anywhere and the fact that we can achieve this level of rendering quality in real time is magical to me. I'm super excited to get more into UE5 and see how it will transform content and films in general. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching all the things that went into making this short film. Make sure to drop a like and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in a future video very soon. Bye!